I'm Dr. Frida, and today we're going to discuss breast cancer as I give you seven facts you should know. Breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women in the United States, and it is the second leading cause of cancer death among women. While it is exceedingly common among women, men can and do get breast cancer as well. Black women tend to be diagnosed at younger ages and have more aggressive forms of breast cancer, and Black women have a 40% higher death rate when it comes to breast cancer. If you're listening and you're thinking that you have no family history, so then maybe you are at low risk, keep listening because up to 85% of women diagnosed with breast cancer have no family history. Breast cancer is a far reaching, complicated, devastating disease. And so today we're going to talk about it. I'm going to help you to understand breast cancer better by discussing the risk factors, the symptoms, and giving you seven facts you should know. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida, an MD who has been triple board certified, and today we're going to talk about understanding breast cancer, risk factors, symptoms. I'm going to give you seven facts you should know about breast cancer. We're going to discuss number one, the definition of breast cancer, number two, who's at risk, number three, what are the symptoms, what should you look out for, number four, how can you catch it early, number five, what are the stages of breast cancer, number six, what is genetic testing? And number seven, the treatment. Breast cancer is caused by a mutation or change in the DNA of breast cells. It's a mutation. And this mutation allows breast cancer cells to grow and to grow and to divide and to overtake normal tissue unchecked. And so as these breast cancer cells divide, they crowd out normal cells and they can extend into other tissue and really upset the system. Who is at risk for breast cancer? Well, risk factors include being a woman, although men can get breast cancer as well. In fact, one in 100 cases of breast cancer are in men. Also, age is a risk factor. The older you get, the more likely you are to develop breast cancer. If you have a family history of breast cancer, that can increase your risk. And certainly, if you yourself have a personal history of breast cancer, that's an increased risk factor. A family history of certain types of cancers, such as breast, ovarian, prostate, melanoma, can increase your risk as well as radiation exposure. And if you're taking post-menopausal hormonal therapy, that can increase your risk as well. And if you are a cigarette smoker and if you drink alcohol, that can also increase your risk for breast cancer. So what are the stages of breast cancer? The stages describe how far the breast cancer has spread within the breast tissue or even to other parts of the body. And it's staged from zero to four. When you hear the term stage zero, that means that there are abnormal breast cells, but they have not spread. They are still located within the milk duct or within the lobule. They have not invaded your tissues. At stage one, that's the earliest stage of invasive breast cancer, and it is less than two centimeters, the breast cancer lesion, and that means that it has just started to invade within the breast tissue. The stages progress on from stage two to stage three to stage four. By stage three, there are lymph nodes involved, meaning that the cancer has spread to lymph nodes and the cancer may have also spread to some local surrounding muscle tissue or to the skin as well. And by the time a stage four of breast cancer is diagnosed, that means that the cancer has spread beyond the breast and is in surrounding tissues and even surrounding organs such as the liver, the brain. So what is genetic testing? Well, genetic testing is a way to see if you have certain genetic markers or if you have inherited certain genes that will put you at potentially a higher risk for developing breast cancer. If you yourself have had breast cancer, then it is recommended that you get genetic testing. Also, if you have a family history, not only of breast cancer, but also a family history of ovarian cancer, melanoma, prostate cancer. If you've been diagnosed with breast cancer younger than the age of 50, certainly genetic testing can be helpful. The two most common genetic markers associated with breast cancer are the BRCA1 and the BRCA2, but there are other genetic markers as well, such as PALB2, which could put you at an increased risk for pancreatic cancer and a certain type of anemia. Consult with your physician 
In many cases, the genetic testing will be covered by insurance, but even if it's not, there are certain programs that can help to cover genetic testing, and oftentimes the cost is not as prohibitive as most people would think. So what are the treatments for breast cancer? The treatment's going to depend on what kind of breast cancer you have, what type, what stages. It's also going to depend on what hormone receptors are there. Is it estrogen positive? Is it progesterone positive? All of these things will be told to you and explained to you by a physician you trust. And so you want to make sure that you research your physician, you get a board certified physician. You make sure that if necessary, you have the breast surgeon on the team, the breast radiologist, the breast oncologist. You want to have a good team and you want to make sure that the team practices evidence-based medicine. Depending on what type of cancer, you may need to have surgery. You may be recommended to have a lumpectomy where just the lump that contains the breast cancer is removed, or it may be recommended that the entire breast is removed or having a mastectomy or even both breasts, a bilateral mastectomy. Oftentimes it is recommended that patients have radiation or chemotherapy before even having the surgery, or sometimes the surgery may occur before, or depending on what stage, surgery may not be recommended at all. Again, consult with your physician and make sure you have an evidence-based medical team you trust in treating your breast cancer. There is a therapy you may have heard of called cryoablation, and this is when a needle is injected into the cancer and the cancer is literally frozen. It's frozen and the cells are disrupted and the cells are then thought to be picked up by your immune system and sometimes it's being used in conjunction with immunotherapy. Again, consult with your physician and make sure you have a physician who is practicing evidence-based medicine to see if cryoablation therapy is appropriate for you or if a surgical lumpectomy is appropriate. Whatever you do, when it comes to the treatment of your breast cancer, make sure that you are not following people who are not board certified. You're not following people who are just social media doctors who don't have credentials. Your health, as you know, is nothing to play with. Talk to the doctors who have been trained to treat your breast cancer. I often get asked, how can you prevent breast cancer in the first place? Now, granted, there are people who can live healthy lifestyles, do everything right, and they may still get breast cancer just based on their genetics or the cards that they were dealt. But certainly having a healthy lifestyle can put you at the best position for preventing breast cancer. So you want to make sure you exercise regularly, you have a heart healthy diet, that you eat foods that are mostly plant-based. You also want to make sure that you stop smoking if you're a cigarette smoker or don't pick up a cigarette. If you drink no alcohol, that can decrease your risk for breast cancer, but certainly if you drink alcohol for moderation, that's going to be better than having excessive use of alcohol. Be sure to watch my video on 10 healthy habits for a better you and a better life after you finish watching this video. If you found these seven facts you should know about breast cancer to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like this video and to share it with the people you care about. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so already. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Dr.Frida. That way you'll see when I have national news appearances, community service, and what I'm up to in my life as I try to live my healthiest life. And make sure you check out my podcast, Healthy Happy Life Podcast with Dr. Frida. Also, you definitely want to read my book, Under Pressure, A Guide to Controlling High Blood Pressure. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching. And I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.